This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Throughout the campaign, survivors will collect resources to develop their settlement and craft gear to be better able to face stronger monsters. During the campaign, there are four types of resources the survivors will find. Monster resources, basic resources, strange resources, and vermin resources. All resources have certain types that will be shared amongst them. Resource types include bone, hide, organ, consumable, scrap, herb, and vermin. Some costs in the game will refer to a specific resource type. For instance, the monster grease costs one organ. Any resource that lists that type may be spent. For instance, a player could spend the monster organ to create monster grease or the sinew to create monster grease because both of them list organ as their resource type. However, some costs will list a specific resource by name. For example, the white lion coat lists white fur and hide as its two resource costs. So the white fur resource will have to be used as one of the resources for the white lion coat. However, the hide could be any sort of hide, including the generic monster hide or even another white fur. As you can see, it's also considered hide. When a specific resource type is listed like this, no substitutions can be made. If a recipe simply says resource, then any resource may be used. When a resource is spent, archive its resource card. Or if the resource was previously recorded in the resource storage at the settlement, erase it from the settlement storage. There are 21 basic resource cards that come with the game. Survivors earn them from various events and by defeating monsters. Monster resource cards are only gained by fighting that specific type of monster. Each huntable monster in the game has its own resource deck. The base game comes with three huntable monsters. The white lion which you see here, the screaming antelope, and the phoenix. Strange resource cards are only gained through very specific circumstances and they tend to be more difficult to come by than other types of resources. Survivors will gain these resources when directed to do so by certain events it is important to note that certain strange resources are actually monster resources and they are in this deck and they are not considered part of a monster's pool of resource cards which are found in the monster's regular resource deck. Vermin resource cards represent the variety of small bizarre fauna found throughout the world of Kingdom Death. Each vermin card has specific rules printed directly on it which you can see here. It's also possible to cook vermin if the settlement innovates cooking. Whenever a survivor gains a resource, draw a card from the appropriate resource deck and place the card in the player's play area next to her gear grid. The survivor is now carrying that resource. Carrying a resource has no actual effect on the survivor's ability to fight or hunt unless otherwise stated. If a resource a survivor is carrying has special rules on it, the survivor may spend that resource at any time to activate those rules. So, if a survivor was carrying this crab spider, she could consume the crab spider, archive the card, meaning put it back in the box, and then gain plus three survival. As I just previously mentioned, any resource with special rules may be used at any time. However, some special rules instruct the player to trigger it when it is gained. For instance, the skull. When you gain this, a survivor of your choice gains plus one insanity. These rules must be performed immediately. Also, some special rules will restrict when that rule can be used. For instance, the special rule for love juice can only be used during the settlement phase. If a resource is in settlement storage, as you see the love juice is here, then it must be removed in order to trigger its special rules. To remove it from storage, the player will erase it from here and then draw that resource card. 
Also, in order to do this, the player must be in the develop step, which is step seven of the settlement phase. The settlement phase will be discussed in detail during the settlement phase video. When the group defeats a monster, they will be rewarded with resources. All living survivors must decide how to divide these resources. They may be divided in absolutely any way the players feel, including pooling them together. Effectively dividing resources will be key in surviving the horrors of Kingdom Death. If the player is ever directed to gain a resource which is not currently in the deck, then she does not gain it and instead she gains nothing. This will occur most commonly when a specific resource is named by an event or effect and that specific resource is already being carried by a survivor. For instance, if this survivor already had the Shimmering Mane White Lion resource and then another survivor or the same survivor got a hit on the glorious main hit location card, rolled a critical wound, and then read the critical wound which says, upon a critical wound, gain the Shimmering Main White Lion resource. Since the Shimmering Main is already being carried by a survivor, this survivor who scored this critical wound will not receive any resource. When a survivor dies or is lost during the hunt phase, any other survivor may pick up any resources she was carrying. If all survivors die or are lost during the hunt phase, then all the resources they were carrying are also lost. If a survivor dies during the showdown, any resources that survivor was carrying may be picked up by any survivor who survives the showdown. If all survivors die during the showdown, then all resources they were carrying are lost. Sometimes a survivor may gain a resource that will greatly benefit another survivor. During the hunt phase, players may freely trade resources amongst themselves at the start of any hunt turn before the next hunt event is revealed. During the showdown phase, survivors may give each other resources anytime during their act if they are adjacent. This means a survivor may pass a resource to another survivor as she moves past him if she wanted to. This will not end her movement. Survivors may freely trade resources during the settlement phase. It's very important to note that when a resource is given to a survivor by another survivor, it is not considered gained. For instance, with the skull, a survivor could not form insanity by constantly giving it back and forth between survivors. Also, when a resource is pulled out of resource storage during the settlement phase, it is also not considered gained. And once again, the skull could not be used to farm insanity in that situation. Once resources have been brought into the settlement, they may not be taken back out on future hunts and showdowns by departing survivors. Any resources must be returned to the settlement storage during the record and archive resources step. The landscape of Kingdom Death is strewn with odd features and relics that may prove advantageous to survivors as they fight for their lives. Terrain tiles are placed on the showdown board prior to the beginning of a showdown. Unless otherwise stated, survivors may move through spaces with terrain as if they were unoccupied. Terrain tiles may never be placed on top of one another. The player should ignore any rules or effects that would cause her to place more terrain tiles than are available in the core game. The terrain and deployment section of each monster's showdown story event specifies what terrain to use for that showdown. Terrain setup will be discussed in more detail during the showdown phase video. Terrain cards correspond with their matching tiles and contain rules for both placing and interacting with that terrain. On a terrain card, players will find an image of the terrain tile, the name of the terrain, and the number of tiles this card generates for setup. If there is no number, then only one tile is set up. Any special rules for the terrain? And terrain setup rules. Terrain setup rules are used only if no specific setup rules are listed in the terrain and deployment section of that showdown event. The player places any terrain cards used on the side of the showdown board so they can be easily referenced during the showdown. Terrain cards with an activation symbol 
indicate that the corresponding terrain can be activated. In order to activate the terrain, a survivor must be either on a space containing the terrain or adjacent to the terrain, as you see here. The survivor may then spend an activation to follow the rules listed. For example, if the survivor wanted to activate this acanthus plant, the survivor would spend his activation, roll 1d10, and see what the result is. In the case of a 2, something bites you, suffer one arm damage, archive this terrain. You'll also notice that certain equipment could affect this, such as in this case, if a survivor had a sickle, he would roll 2d10 instead. Terrain may also have persistent rules that affect survivors or even monsters during the showdown. For instance, with tall grass, survivors in spaces occupied by tall grass gain plus to evasion. So a survivor in any of these four spaces would gain plus to evasion during the showdown. If that survivor were to leave a space containing the grass, they would also lose that plus to evasion bonus. Another persistent rule that terrain may have is obstacle. An obstacle blocks the field of view for both survivors and monsters. By blocking the field of view, an obstacle prevents ranged weapon attacks and can block targeting by monsters. It's important to note an obstacle would specifically prevent targeting when a pick target action specifies in field of view, as Byte does here, closest survivor in field of view. In order to determine if a survivor or monster's field of view is blocked, draw an imaginary line from the center of the miniature's base to the center of the intended target's base. If the line comes into contact with a space occupied by an obstacle, then the field of view is blocked and the target is not in the field of view. So this survivor could not target the monster with a ranged weapon, and the monster could not target the survivor if the monster is looking for a survivor in field of view. Alternatively, if the card does not specify in field of view, for instance here with gore, it says random survivor in range, then as long as the survivor is in range, and in this case he is, the monster still can target him despite not having field of view. Another persistent rule that terrain will often have is impassable. Survivors cannot move through spaces occupied by impassable terrain, and if a survivor would enter a space with impassable terrain for any reason, the survivor instead collides with it. For instance, if this screaming antelope were to knock the survivor back into this impassable terrain, the survivor would instead collide with it and be placed on the nearest free space adjacent to the terrain. Collisions will be fully explained during the showdown phase video. Some terrain is destructible, as these stone columns are as well. When a survivor collides with destructible terrain, the player archives that terrain tile. Unless otherwise stated, monsters will ignore terrain entirely as if it was not there. This means monsters may freely walk over impassable terrain, and it means if a monster passes over destructible terrain, the player archives it and the monster continues movement as normal. And that concludes our resources and terrain portion of our Kingdom Death tutorial. Be sure to come back and check for more videos in the future. Go back and look at the previous ones if you haven't seen them yet. Get your Bored Cthulhu t-shirt from geekygoodies.com. Support us over on PyPlage. Find us on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And most of all, come back for more videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.